On August 12th of 1731, Winston Churchill was aboard a cruise ship on the Mississippi River, and he made the most famous of speeches, asking the question to us, can a pedal be a guitar, and can a guitar be a pedal? Today, we want to try to answer his question. We want to find a resolve. People have been toying with the idea of putting effects inside of guitars for a long time. A lot of Japanese companies have done this in different shapes or forms as early as the late 60s, I believe. My favorite version of this historically is the 1976 Electra MPC. Electra is a Japanese manufacturer. They distributed these in the United States through St. Louis Music and someone else, I believe. But the idea is simple a Les Paul style guitar, and you have these paddle switches to turn effects on and off, and you have knob controls, you know, the typical volume, but you also have controls for the effects. So where are the effects? That's where it gets interesting. You open a door, and there's a cavity, you can put stuff in it, you could hide money, you know, keep your darkest secrets, whatever, or you could put their cartridges in. This is the power overdriver, and it kind of has a Nintendo cartridge vibe. You just slide it in there, Pop it in. We have a phase shifter, a flanger. Nick, which one you want to do? Flanger. Let's do flanger. flanger. Yeah. Flanger, pop that in. Close the door, lock it, and boom. Overdrive, flange, and some controls. This is really cool. I borrowed it from Jeff Tweedy 2014 or 2015, and it's been around the shop for a while, and I got really into it around 2017, 2018, and I decided. These cartridges are cool, they're a little limited. Let me make some of my own. So we whipped up some 3D uh, enclosures and put some of our circuits in here. That's an Andy Timmons, that's a Honeycomb trim, Milkman, a Boost, Fuzz, compression, you get the idea. So yeah, you put those cartridges in and it works pretty well. And I really like the concept, but it's a little clunky pulling things out. Do I really wanna do that? Would I ever actually play a gig moving cartridges in and out of a guitar and dealing with a battery. Probably not. And ironically, around that time of making these cartridges, my friends over at Built had built me a guitar that's really incredible that I use on the show a ton. It's this one. And I love it. It's my number one guitar. You've all seen it, I'm sure. It's tons of pickups. It's an offset. It is absolutely my favorite for so many reasons. And they approached me and said, we know you love that guitar. Let's do something really crazy to the same idea. So let's take that same exact model, the mastery trim, the same mini buckers, but let's do something really wild. Let's put your effects in it. And so we did, and we have this. So this happened, uh, I think we started dreaming it up 2018, and you have effects in here. So when we hit a button, that's an effect, that's an effect. And when you look in the back, there's an actual circuit board. So we laid this out like a pedal, and essentially it is a multi-effect pedal that's all analog with true bypass relay switching in it. And it works by using a foot switch. You take this, plug in nine volt power, and use a stereo cable, and power travels through the cable, powers that circuit board, also sends your guitar signal to the amp, and hypothetically, this is all I would need for a gig. I chose the effects very purposely. I put in a Morning Glory. I put in a Slap Milkman Echo. I put in a Mini Foot Fuzz. And then I put in a Dan Armstrong Red Ranger, which has a treble boost, mid boost, or a bass boost. You can switch it out in the back. Yeah, three pickups. Let's talk about the circuit board and how that works. The first effect that we'll go over because I'm gonna use it in a couple riffs is this one. When you engage this push button, when it's up, this is volume, tone, and drive, and it is a morning glory. So it's basically like a V1, V2 morning glory. You flip it over here, I have the back plate off. There is a high cut toggle, so I have the high cut off because I never cut the highs on the morning glory, usually, especially on a guitar like this. So I'm gonna engage it on this riff I'll have some spring reverb as well, just from the amp. That's one of the rules. I'm gonna try to just use the guitar. You might hear some reverb today. Uh, and then I'll engage a second effect, 
which is this. When I engage that effect, it is a Dan Armstrong Red Ranger. This is a type of booster that's really cool. It has a bass, full, or treble boost setting. And you're probably familiar with that line due to the orange squeezer. A lot of people don't talk about this one, but it's really nice. I'm gonna have it in the treble boost. So this toggle lets you do treble, mid, or bass. I'll have it as a treble booster. That's it, and we'll jam and uh, see what it sounds like. That was kind of like if John Mayer had been well established during uh, Evil Empire, Rage Against the Machine, and they got together and did like a John Mayer, Rage Against the Machine band. I, I don't know. Anyway, next is let's show the echo. So when I engage this button, it engages the Milkman echo. So take away the boost and you have slap, mix, repeat, and EQ. Now that's all located in the back. And I did that because it's too many controls to mess with up front, and I usually use one or two slap sounds. I could set this to one sound and be happy for the rest of my life. There are those, you can just roll those. They're like thumb roller pots. Yeah, that's it, and uh, I'll engage that. I'm also gonna have the Morning Glory on a lower gain setting than I did in the last one. I had it up kind of heavy, but the Morning Glory doesn't do heavy, so you get what I'm saying. Lighter gain drive and some slap echo. Let's see. That was like if Spoon was a country band, which isn't that far-fetched because they're from Austin. I mean, I don't know. Is every band from Texas country, sort of? Yeah. Because it's like Big Sky Country. There was that Montana. Yeah. It's confusing. Uh, Let's move on. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to get into fuzz land. So the fuzz is the mini foot fuzz. It's like a version two. And when you engage this switch, the fuzz turns on. That's volume. These roller pots feel really good. Inside you have the fuzz control. I didn't bother with the clipping control because I just set it where I wanted it. And yeah, so I'll engage that. I'll use some reverb. Uh, 
I will also turn the slap on and I'll do the mid boost. Why not? What you just heard was, it's that thing where like you can play a lot of bull crap and sometimes it sounds good. I think it sounded okay. I'd rate that a six out of 10. You know, I'm not proud of it, but I'm showing it. So I'm okay with it. The next riff, uh, let's use just the booster. So just really highlight the booster. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna put it in the trouble booster mode. It'll be the Red Ranger here that I've been using, but I'm gonna use it by itself and just cranked amp sound and hit it with that. And maybe imagine that ACDC is us or maybe we're them. But I can't say that because I don't want to get flagged. So I never said that. absolutely love this. I find it a bit humorous that I have not been able to really dive into this guitar that I've had for two years until this week. Um, I got really excited to actually use it and show it off in a demo. I'm going to try some gigs with this when the world can gig again. Uh, it's cool. One of the, the best features, honestly, is it's relay true bypass. So when you hit a button, it truly is out of the path. That's one of the weird things with the cartridge guitars and some other guitars that had effects in them is they're always like horribly bypassed. So when you turn an effect off, it stays dark. But this is beautiful. When they're off, you have the three pickups. You just engage whatever order you want. Super usable. I really like it. It's not gimmicky at all. And I'm not just saying that. I have nothing to gain here because you can't buy this. There's only one of them. I think it's awesome. So let's go to record time. Today's record time is brought to you by 2018's Warm by Jeff Tweedy. Fantastic solo record. Uh, Jeff, this is in honor of your amazing music and this album, which I dearly love, but also the electric guitar that I showed earlier that's still on loan, apparently. Uh, if you have not heard this, please, please check it out. Uh, Wilco goes without saying one of the best indie rock bands ever just an amazing band and amazing records but Jeff's solo stuff is actually 
most favorite to me in many ways. So this this album, How Hard Is It For A Desert To Die, is unbelievable. Having Been Is No Way Back To Be. The drums, the openness of the songs, the guitar tones are very unique uh, when they're unique. Otherwise, they're just really good standard amazing like acoustic tones and the way it's mixed is is just fun everything's good i could keep going on and on about it but check it out in the comments let me know what you think and if you have another favorite jeff tweedy record there's a few or any of his work wilco the stuff he did with mavis staples whatever let's talk about it in the comments yeah check it Thanks so much for watching this episode. In the comments below, let me know your favorite riff from today, favorite jam. Let me know how you would use this guitar. And then let me know the hypothetical name of your non-existing band that you would form if you own the guitar. I'd like to know all about that, how you use the guitar in a performance situation. Uh, there is a website called djhsshow.com. You can go buy shirts and other things. You can be a member of our Patreon. There's a link in the description below. There's giveaways there there's talks that i do about history things you won't find here on this channel so if you're a nerd and you love pedals you can help support what we do by going there click like subscribe and uh, click the bell icon as well to get notifications have a wonderful day